Fairies, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from January 11th to January 18th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy and mine, so we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle the busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Aries content is uploaded. Aries content comes out every single Wednesday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal reading, please check out the description box below. If you're feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, you can find a link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings depending upon subscription level. Now a little astrology before we jump in. Starting with January 11th, we got that moon in Virgo trying that Uranus in Taurus. So we're going to be focused on the future. But we're going to need to really think about what our next steps are and making plans. But don't be surprised if we have to rethink those plans with Mercury still being retrograde and Mars not being direct. But that is about to change because on January 12th, Mars in Gemini turns direct. Well, the waning gibbonous moon enters into Libra. And this is a beautiful thing. Because a lot of people are very frustrated when Mars is in retrograde. We are not taking actions. We are thinking about actions we already took. And with it being in Gemini, we're either taking impetuous actions because we're frustrated or we're overthinking the things that we did in the past. We could be playing them up to the, you know, focusing on the worst things that we ever did and letting that play in our mind in like that eight of swords sort of energy. And it is not helpful. With it going direct with relationship focused Libra, the energy is being compatible, Gemini and Libra, right? So since they're both air signs, everything is going to calm down. Frustrations that are calmed down and people, projects, and connections just got out a whole lot easier. All of a sudden, everybody wants to try to understand each other. On January 13th, that sun in Capricorn is going to be sextile, that Neptune in Pisces, with a waning gibbonous moon still in Libra. So your intuition is going to be strong, but with Mercury still being retrograde, Mars just starting to go direct, and with that Neptune in Pisces, and Neptune in Pisces, dreamy Pisces. Okay, so looking at the world through rose-colored glasses when we're in a happy place or seeing betrayal and heartache and frustration and stress and bad things when we're in a negative place. So follow your intuition on that day. Your intuition is going to be super strong, but make it take you to places where you can back it up, right? Don't accuse anybody of anything if you don't got no screenshots, if you don't have any proof. If you come up with some crazy big idea, which could be 100% correct because your intuition took you there, you should be able to back that up with something, concrete proof of some kind. Look for that proof. Especially since on January 14th, that last quarter moon in Libra, while well, Venus is in Aquarius, square the Uranus and Taurus. So it's a day where it's going to be easy to get impatient and we could potentially damage relationships on this day, especially those that already have problems. So just try to be as calm and centered and balanced as possible. On January 15th, that waning crescent moon is in Scorpio. So that passions are going to be running high. But focusing on the transformation is favored and research is, is favored. So again, intuitions and passions will be high. You can be like, oh my God, I found this thing. And you can run down that rabbit hole. But it's good. Just make sure you still are backing things up with facts. Find corroborating evidence. On January 16th, that moon is still in Scorpio, but now it's square. Venus in Aquarius, which means you might feel exhausted. All those ups and downs just in those few days with Mars down going direct, you just might feel plum tired. It's all right. Get some extra rest. On January 17th, that moon in Sagittarius says, be open to all the possibilities and be ready to go on a fun adventure, especially with Mars being direct. We're going to want to take action. So go run off and do something fun. On January 18th, Mercury goes direct in Capricorn. And again, hallelujah. Because when Mercury is in retrograde, no matter what sign it is in, you do not have all the information. Things are not clear. Stuff is going to come to light while Mercury goes direct. And it is that sun 
in Capricorn is conjunct that Pluto in Capricorn. So this is the time to start new things. You're going to feel really powerful and you're going to feel especially passionate. Let's jump in. Aries, January 11th to the 18th. Take that. Aries, January 11th to the 18th. 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 All right, now I will clarify these cards, but before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. Also, this is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave the rest. Just because the whole message does not resonate with you doesn't mean there's not a message in here for you. And um, also, there's no gender in tarot. So, death card, that's Scorpio energy. That is about transformation, it's about change. Three of Wands, that's looking towards the future. Trying to be focused on something. Now, the world card, that is Capricorn Aquarius energy, but it's also a card of travel or completions and closure. Okay, now in your present moment, you got the Knight of Pentacles. Since any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Virgo, also a card of Leo can be interacting with any of those signs. It's also slow moving energy. So you can just be very calmly and quietly walking towards the future, especially with six of swords in your near future. That is a card of movement. It's again, a card of travel. It's a card of forward motion. And then also in your near future here, this is the Hierophant, that's Taurus energy. But it is also the card of the Ascended Master. It's a card of, a, of any religious leader. It's also a, could be a judge, it could be a marriage. It could be anything sort of official. And yet esoteric at the same time. Uh, someone to you, Page of Wands. They're going to want to be doing some communications. You do that someone, Ten of Wands. You are not having this. Whatever it is that they are saying, you're like, nope, not my problem. It's like, not my circus, not my monkeys. Take your problems and go. Balance is found in the Page of Swords. There's some sort of truth that's going to come from this balance. And that's going to lead to the Ace of Swords. That's so a realization about the truth that you were just given. Summary of that is Nine of Cups, focusing on one's own happiness. Two of Cups, that's Cancer energy right there. That is uh, about a connection or a relationship. Seven of Cups, and looking at some options here. Hmm. Let's get some clarification. What is this death card about in Aries past? The sun, what's this death card about? The tower and the knight of pentacles. Okay, so whoever you're interacting with here in your present moment, you could have interacted here and there with here in the past. Because again, it's any earth sign. Uh, the sun is Leo energy. Tower is actually Aries energy. But the, this uh, death card here is usually death cards are a rebirth. And it's not. It's an ending. Something ended with this person. Some information came to light, either you about them or them about you, and a, and a tower happened. Towers happen for us, not to us, okay? It's, uh, you can't build on quicksand, all right? You need a solid foundation or nothing lasts. What is this three of wands in Aries past? Two of cups, what's this? Okay. Wheel of Fortune, King of Cups, Two of Pentacles, two of, two of Cups. So again, uh, Cancer Energy, this is any water sign. Uh, cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, also uh, it's a card of primarily Scorpio, but also a card of Libra. This is uh, Sagittarius, Pisces Energy. 
but you were looking towards your future, trying to be emotionally balanced in when dealing with this uh, relationship and understanding that something is a matter of divine timing. Nothing was going to happen before the time is right. It's probably why you have the tower there. World card here. What is this world card in Aries past? Six of Wands. What's this world card? Nine of Cups in reverse. What's this world card? Knight of Cups. So something was successfully brought to a completion, possibly with a water sign here. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Pisces. Knight of Cups is also a card of Aquarius, in case you're interacting with one of those signs. You just weren't happy. Things did, a communication came in. Things Either there was travel and that was successful, but you weren't happy with how the trip went or something was brought to a conclusion and you're not necessarily happy with that nine of cups in reverse. Could be you weren't happy about this tower moment that happened in the past. What is this knight of pentacles in Aries present moment? Ten of swords. What's this knight of pentacles in Aries present moment? Justice card, it's Libra energy. What is this Knight of Pentacles? Eight of Wands. It's communications. Whoever this very slow moving energy is, there was a betrayal, and now there's communications about desiring a balance, possibly within a contract. So justice card is uh, Libra energy, but it also has anything to do with contracts, documents, marriages, anything of this nature, you know, stuff where there's paperwork, lots of stuff where there's paperwork. What is the six of swords about in Aries near future? Ten of wands, queen of wands. What's the six of swords about? strength card. So this is Leo energy, but the Queen of Wands is indeed your energy. It's also a card of uh, Libra or Pisces. Could be other fire signs, but it really just feels like you. You set down some sort of burden here in the future. You're strong. You made it through the other side and you set down this burden and now you're moving on because you just don't want to deal with whatever this is. Whatever this that led to this tower was that led to your unhappiness. You're done with that. That betrayal, you're like, nope, moving on. What is this Hierophant card about in Aries near future? Page of Cups in reverse. What's this Hierophant card? Wow. Nine of Swords What in reverse. What's this Hierophant card? Knight of Swords. So Knight of Swords is any air sign... Libra, Aquarius, Gemini is also a card of Taurus. So whoever this was that you were uh, in, whoever this was that you were interacting with that's in this higher energy, this, this um, official of some kind, if you're not just interacting with a Taurus or a Gemini, because um, you could be interacting with either one of them, they bring you something with this Knight of Swords energy moving really fast. There's, there's not an apology here, uh, but whatever it is that happens, maybe it's a, a lack of communication, makes something clear to you, I'll let you uh, walk away from something. Maybe you get some sort of communication again about something you didn't like with the Page of Cups in reverse. So you take an action and it takes you out of that nightmare energy. For Aries are really uh, fiery kind of people. They can be really impatient though. They want to get things done. They're in a rush to get things done. Always. There's always something they need doing and there's always something they're trying to move forward with. And it's possible that uh, that's part of why you weren't happy with because it was delays. Delays in information, delays in things that you need. And um, you come out of this nightmare energy and are able to move with that Knight of Swords energy. Because you get some sort of information that comes in that lets you set down this burden and move forward. What's this page of wands in Aries future? Page of wands in reverse. What's this page of wands in Aries future? Nine of wands and high priestess. This is Pisces energy here. The uh, Knight of wands is any fire sign, including yourself. 
uh, heavy on the Sagittarius. Uh, Nine of Wands is also a card of Scorpio. It's very strange. The Page of Wands in reverse and the Page of Wands upright. You need to use your intuition about what's coming into you. You're not getting the whole story. This person is being inconsistent. They're not necessarily being entirely truthful. There's something wrong with what they're telling you. Your instinct is going to tell you that there's something wrong here. There's some sort of inconsistency. What is this Ten of Wands? Six of Swords. What's this Ten of Wands? Tara is so funny. What is this Ten of Wands? Temperance. What's this Ten of Wands? You have the Ten of Wands with the Six of Swords, and you're, you have the Six of Swords with the Ten of Wands. So whatever this is here in your near future, you're still going to be feeling this in your... Uh, in your your more distant future you're so, there's something you're going to need to balance but the two of pentacles which is uh, you know about juggling trying to make something you know sustainable 10 uh, and you know on the ten of wands on the six of swords and moving away from a burden because you're juggling something you're trying to find balance here with the temperance card what's this page of swords in aries balance Eight of Swords in reverse. What's this? I guess we'll take those. You got the Seven of Cups, the Emperor, the Lovers, the Ten of Cups, the Eight of Swords in reverse. You're going to get some sort of information that takes you out of your head. Very specifically, Aries is just your, I mean, this, the Emperor is Aries energy. You're going to be looking at options within this partnership. This Gemini energy there with the... Uh, with the lovers, it's possible that the information comes into you from a Gemini, or it's about a relationship itself, and in fact, about a community as a whole. What's this uh, Ace of Swords in Aries outcome? What's this Ace of Swords? That's your energy with the Fool. Three of Pentacles. What's this Ace of Swords? Four of Wands in reverse. Wow. Three of Pentacles and the Four of Wands in reverse. That's opposing energies again. Because the Three of Pentacles is an official relationship. It can, it can be a marriage. It can be a contract. It can be a document. It could be an employer. It could be a church. This kind of, of architecture that you have going on here with this trefoil uh, situation and this gothic sort of uh, architecture going on. And this person, could, like, they could be selling wares. They could be doing blessings. This could be a baby. They could be getting married. I mean, it's, it's an official building of some kind. Maybe it's a relationship you used to have or a relationship you're still uh, legally in but your energy is not in it anymore. But you're going to have some revelation about perhaps the inconsistency going on within this relationship because it's your energy there with the fool. It's your, you're going to have some kind of realization. It's yours to have. What is this Nine of Cups in Aries summary? The Empress, what's this Nine of Cups? Two of Swords, what's this Nine of Cups? Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups is any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, also a card of Gemini. Two of Swords is a minor arcana justice uh, card. It's uh, Libra energy. And the Empress is Taurus Libra energy. So focusing on one's own happiness after having this, this uh, revelation allows you to, to come out of this place of indecision Get yourself, uh, use your intuition about how to handle this moving forward. You're going to do something, I suspect, in a very creative way if you're not just interacting with a Libra or a Taurus. You're going to need to take that as it resonates. What is this Two of Cups in Aries summary? Page of Pentacles. What's this Two of Cups in Aries summary? Four of Pentacles. What's this Two of Cups? Knight of Swords. Well, King of Swords. Sorry. And an air sign. Aquarius. Libra Gemini. Heavy on the Aquarius. Also a card of Capricorn. Somebody's holding it on to you. 
or you're holding on to this relationship. You're going to get some kind of information that comes into you about this relationship, and you guys are going to hold on to each other. Either you're holding on to them or they're holding on to you. What's the Seven of Cups about in Aries Summary? Seven of Swords. I would look up. Yeah. Angel number 77 and 66 here. These are the Six of Pentacles, Six of Cups. So somebody, you and somebody you already know, right, with the Six of Cups are looking at options here. Because something was not in balance. Perhaps somebody was lying to you with the Seven of Swords because that's lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. But in this instance, it might also be a card of strategy. You and somebody that you have some sort of soul connection here with the Six of Cups are looking at various options because you realize that something was out of balance and now you need a strategy on how to deal with it. What is this, uh, what is the advice for Aries? January 11th to the 18th. Three of Swords advice for Aries? Judgment in the sun. Hmm. Scorpio energy. This is also Pluto energy, which is in Capricorn right now. And the sun is Leo energy. So there's some sort of uh, thing you're going to find out here with this three of swords. You don't like it. It's this imbalance, right? And you need to make a concrete choice. Happiness is a choice. It's a perspective. It's a choice to get up every day and decide to be happy with your overall situation. It's also possible that it's telling you you need to go seek out more information here with the sun card about what, what it is exactly that's making you unhappy. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Message for Aries. Trust. Message for Aries. Compromise. Message for Aries. Be assertive. Okay, so make sure you're really clear in your language. Okay, don't leave things open-ended and waffly, okay? If you very much do not want that thing and very much do want this thing, then be assertive. Make sure you're stating it. But just understand that you're in a relationship with another person. The whole world is about connections and relationships with other people, okay? So compromise is always the name of the game. And trust is very much needed. If you don't trust them, then they should have no reason to trust you. Okay? But approach the person assuming that a compromise can be found. And then use language in such a way that lets them know what you will or will not find acceptable. Advice for Aries, January 11th to the 18th. You are good enough, full moon in Virgo. Advice for Aries. January 11th to the 18th. Don't let your past hold you back, South Node. Advice for Aries, January 11th to the 18th. Take time to breathe out, disseminating moon. Yeah. If you're feeling overly stressed or something, you know, take a break. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Nothing will come of this situation, void of course moon. And what that really means is all this stress, all this stuff, all this, you know, you could be thinking about that. You could be worrying about this. You could be worrying. About, it's all going to come to nothing. You're going to find a solution. You won't find a solution until the time is right. And you won't find a solution until you trust and reach towards the other person. So maybe start with that instead of stressing yourself out. You and your loved ones are safe. New moon and cancer. A new romantic cycle begins. New moon and Libra. Step out of your comfort zone. North node. All right, let's get you a fairy message. Message for Aries. Message for Aries. Rainbows of love. All about you are rainbows of love. Breathe in and welcome the sweet joy of life that is entering your energy field. You are a rainbow child and we cherish you. Isn't that sweet? 
All right, well, that is what I have for you, Aries. I hope it helps. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.